Hello and welcome to Monumental, a series of weekly podcasts that looks at the history behind the people and things that inspired great public monuments. This week is all about a fat, broke guy that would have been a shriveled pube in the underpants of history had it not been for the fact that he was a senior member of the British royal family. Behind me is a monument to Frederick Augustus, the Duke of York. Now, this was a guy who liked doing two things, gambling and being in the army. Unfortunately, he was crap at both. He commanded two campaigns that were such big cock-ups, we still sing about them today, and it was remarked when he died, it was a good thing his memorial was quite so tall so he could finally escape all the people he owed money to. As the second son of the monarch, Frederick was earmarked for a career in the military and he was fast-tracked into two commands, the campaign in Flanders in 1793-8 and the invasion of Holland in 1799, both of which were complete disasters. In fact, the Dutch invasion went so badly that everybody started singing a song all about his infamous inability to make any decisions whatsoever. It went something like, the grand old Duke of York, he had 10,000 men, he marched them up to the top of a hill and he marched them down again. Instead of being sacked for badly losing two key away fixtures, he was appointed Commander-in-Chief of the Army, a position he was to hold for the rest of his life, apart from a two-year period when it emerged that he had been promoting officers in return for large amounts of cash. As usual, he was colossally in debt from losing at cards and at the horses, and couldn't afford the very generous allowance he usually gave his mistress, Mary Ann Clark, and he needed to make the money some other way. But his love for the army was obviously greater than his love for Mary, and he managed to get Parliament to believe the whole thing was Mary Ann Clark's fault, and lo and behold, Prince Fred was reinstated. It wasn't all bad news with Freddie though. Firstly, he brought in some well overdue reforms to the British Army. In those days, to become an officer, you only really needed two things, the right breeding and a great big bag of cash. It didn't matter if you were less talented than Kelly Brook and weaker than my jokes. Frederick insisted for the first time that all new officers had a minimum amount of army experience before they took up their commissions. Secondly, he holds the world record for being the youngest ever bishop, having been elected Prince Bishop of Osnabrück at the tender age of six months old. Apparently, when he was tired, the sermons were a little bit whiny, but got more passive with milk. He also must have been quite a likeable chap if you got to know him, which explains why he's got such a big monument. He was King George III's favourite son and King George IV's favourite brother. When Prince Frederick died from complications from all the booze and food he'd shoved into his gob, the king, his brother, was gutted and decided to commission this memorial to him. But like his brother, he didn't have the money to pay for things, so he stopped the pay of the entire army for one day, which freed up enough cash to build it. Thanks to its height and prominent location, it quickly became the place from which to commit suicide. I can only imagine when depressed Londoner after depressed Londoner finally reached the top of this absurdly flattering monument and had a good look at the statue, it only would have confirmed their already strong conviction that life just isn't fair. It makes you quite thankful for Prince Andrew, really. Coming up next week on Monumental. Sometimes it's a good idea to let your kids talk to strangers in the park. In this case, it launched one of the publishing sensations of the 20th century. Thank you.